Hello everybody, Tommy Ruin here and welcome back to another build video. In this video I'm going to be going over the Moonkin build that I've been using recently in Project Ascension. It deals really nice damage, has a really fun playstyle and it also brings some nice buffs to your raid group so it's definitely one to look out for if you're playing on free pick servers and also on draft mode. <laughs> As you'd expect, this build focuses primarily on the balanced druid tree, with a few good talents coming from the other talent trees that are available in Ascension to boost the damage of this build. So the core mechanic that makes this build work is Eclipse, which is a 3 point talent down near the end of the balanced druid tree. This has synergy with both your wrath and your starfire spells, as well as the balanced druid legendary random enchant called Total Eclipse. This talent is quite fun. When you use Wrath on a target, it will then proc the Lunar Eclipse, which increases the critical strike chance of your Starfire by 50% for a short time. I think it's around 15 seconds. And then after that time, the Lunar Eclipse has a 30 second cooldown. But then when you cast a Starfire at the end of your Lunar Eclipse, it will proc the Solar Eclipse, which increases the damage of your Wrath by 50% so you cycle between the two eclipses constantly and the lunar eclipse in particular is very very strong because as a caster in ascension you can get up to 50% crit baseline which means that you can cap out your crit for starfires meaning that you can do some insane damage when you line up your damage cooldowns and your lunar eclipse. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the talents and see what makes this build tick. So starting off in Balanced Druid, and we're going to be spending a lot of time in the Balanced Druid, we've got Starlight Wrath, which reduces the cast time of Wrath and Starfire by 0.5 seconds. Now this is good because it means you can fire off your damaging spells a lot more quickly. Nature's Grace is also insanely good here because when you crit with your Wrath and your Starfire, you'll increase your haste by 20% for 3 seconds and because you're going to be critting a hell of a lot in your Starfire Lunar phase, you're going to be getting Nature's Grace a lot, which means more Starfires, more crits, more Nature's Grace, it works so well. To the right we have Nature's Splendor which increases the duration of Moonfire and Insect Swarm by a short amount and I will explain why we want that one a bit later when we go over the random enchants. Vengeance increases the critical strike damage bonus of Starfire and Wrath by 100%. We then have Improved Insect Swarm which increases our nature damage done when the target has Insect Swarm on them and the Arcane damage when they have Moonfire on them and again I'll explain this uh, synergy when we go into the random enchants. We also have Moon Fury which increases the damage of Starfire and Wrath, easy. We have Balance of Power to get some extra hit rating. If you don't need the hit rating then you can drop this talent. We then have Moonkin Form obviously, uh, it's a great, great talent for this and it gives us some bonuses as well. So it gives the whole raid 5% crit when we are in our Moonkin Form. It's a shame we look ugly and like a big fat owl but we have to do that to get the other bonuses because it increases the damage bonus of Wrath and Starfire by a big amount. Now we have Wrath of Scenarius which increases our Starfire and Wrath damage by 20% and 10% of our bonus spell damage. We've got Eclipse which we mentioned earlier which is the crux of this build. Earth and Moon is the other benefit that we bring to a raid group as when we Starfire and Wrath we give the target that we're fighting the earth and moon effect which increases the spell damage it takes by 13% which is nothing to scoff at and that talent also increases our arcane and nature damage by 6%. Finally in the balance druid tree we have starfall which is a great burst cooldown for AoE and you can also use it in your single target rotation because it does some very nice damage especially when twinned with your cooldowns. In Restoration Druid we have the Master Shapeshifter talent which again just increases our Arcane and Nature damage, our two main spell schools by 4%. In the Hunter Tree we have Black Arrow which we're going to be using on cooldown to there increase our magic damage further. In the Mage Tree we have Focus Magic which we'll throw out to another Focus Magic user to increase our crit chance. Arcane Power is a big burst cooldown. In the Paladin tree we have Enlightened Judgments again for that hit rating, if you don't need it you can drop it. 
We have Ardent Defender, which is a lifesaver. You will want this in every raid build, uh, really. Um, we have Power Infusion, which increases our spell casting speed by 20%, and then Twinned with Arcane Power is a massive burst cooldown. In the Rogue Tree, we have Hunger for Blood. I get a lot of questions about Hunger for Blood because I put it in all my DPS builds, even casters. Normally in a raid, someone's going to be applying a a bleed effect and that means that you can proc hunger for blood which is just a flat five percent damage increase it's busted for one talent essence and you want to pick it up in the shaman tree we have mental quickness for the spell power increase that we get and then we have blessing of the eternals which increases the critical effect chance of our spells by two percent so that's just flat two percent crit on our spells Finally, in the Warlock tree, we have Summon Felguard, which is just like a 4% damage bonus, I think, having a Felguard out. And then we have Master Conjurer to increase the effect of our crit stones. Alright, so those are the talents. Let's talk random enchants. First and foremost, we have Moon Fury, which increases the spell damage of our main spells, Wrath and Starfire, by 3% each meaning we almost get 10% extra damage from three random enchants. We then have Nature's Majesty, which increases the spell crit of those same spells. We have three Wrath of Scenarius, which increase the bonus spell damage that we gain on our Wrath and our Starfire. We have Nature's Grace, which increases the spell haste we get when we get our Nature's Grace effect. Um, we have Playing with Fire, which increases our spell damage. One-handed weapon specialization, which increases all our damage by 2% if we've got a one-handed weapon equipped. We've got Earth and Moon, which gives us 3% arcane and nature damage. Balance of Power, which gives us 2% spell hit. And we have Total Eclipse. Now, Total Eclipse is really cool because it gives us extra effects when we use our Eclipse correctly. So when we're in a Solar Eclipse and we hit the target with a Wrath, the target then gets an Insect Swarm applied to it, which procs the talents which we have to gain bonus spell damage when we have Insect Swarm on the target. You don't even have to learn Insect Swarm for this to proc. So you get 6% extra damage on your Wrath Phase from that RE. And that's not all. When you're in the Lunar Eclipse and you cast a Starfire, a Moonfire procs on the target, and this gives you the 6% extra spell damage from the talent that you have, the improved Insect Swarm talent. So you get 6% bonus damage in both of your phases from that talent. Now we chose um, the talent that increases the duration because these this random enchant doesn't give us the full Eclipse window unless we have the extra duration of Moonfire and Insect Swarm. So I take that so you get the full benefit of the 6% damage bonus when you're using this legendary random enchant. Alright, so those are the REs, we've done the talents and the spells. Let's quickly talk about stat allocation because we're going full strength here to gain the maximum amount of spell power we possibly can from mental quickness. It's as easy as that, it gives the most spell power, so we'll go with full strength and then we'll put some points into intellect or stamina or whatever you want to go. I go intellect because it gives you the spell crit and the extra mana. I'll put a link to this build down in the description so you can check it out for yourself, but now let's go and have a look at how it plays. So for my opener, I start by placing my Searing Totem, which is just a damage bonus that you start with in the beginning of the raid. Don't feel like you need to place this down on cooldown, just when you get a moment and you're running or you're doing something like that, place it down as it is a DPS increase. So start with your totem and then I start with a wrath which procs the lunar eclipse. Then I try and make sure my hunger for blood is up, I pop black arrow for the damage increase on the target and the wrath that I cast would have caused the earth and moon effect on the target. So then I pop my burst cooldown of arcane power and power infusion and I start going ham with my star fires for 15 seconds and boy is the burst sweet it is so nice to see those crits uh, in a raid setting once your lunar eclipse is over you switch to solar uh, eclipse and you start casting wraths again you're maintaining your black arrow um, and 
just you cycle basically that's it you cycle between the two you obviously use life tap and your mana rubies and your mana gems to increase your mana when you need it you've got innovate there to increase your mana this this spec is honestly very very strong and to me the only downside is you have to look like a fat ugly chicken so hopefully they're bringing the glyph of the star soon we'll see but that is this build. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments section. I'm more than happy to answer anything that you might have to ask. If you think I've done something wrong or something you want to see in the future, let me know and I will reply to as many as I can. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very soon.